Hello, this is the Estet. This time around, I shall be covering the Russian satirical novella Day of the Oprichnik. Introduction It tells of a hypothetical future in which the Russian state undergoes a metamorphosis, regressing into a tsardom. Many of the old customs and institutions are brought back, with the centerpiece in the story being the titular Oprichniks. The protagonist, Andrei Danilovich Komaga, a senior member in the organization, goes through his daily business, hunting down the enemies of the state and everything deemed subversive. The Aprichnik methods are ruthless, and they themselves are shown to be highly corrupt. They focus a great deal of their efforts on acquiring wealth and means of pleasure. There are a lot of internal power plays and schemes, in which the different factions in the state attempt to strengthen their position around the Tsar. Analysis Russia is shown to be very much medieval in its social development, while still possessing relatively modern technology, although it all comes from China. On that point, it is made pretty clear that China has a great deal of power over the Tsardom. Aside from the production of goods, they are the main trade partner and dozens of millions of Chinese citizens have settled Russia, while still remaining subservient to their homeland. It is pointed out in passing how hypocritical the Russian foreign policy is. While they have built walls to isolate themselves from Europe and most of their other neighbors, in order to block Western subversiveness, they dare not question China. Hypocrisy is probably the most common theme in the story. Some mind-altering substances are allowed for consumption, while others are arbitrarily blocked, while the average citizen is reduced to the level of a 16th century peasant, the elite live extremely decadent lives. The Aprichniks in particular are guilty of most acts that they punish others for. Satire the book makes fun of a great deal of aspects of Russian life and society. Even the language used in the original, although it is much less present in the English translation, is extremely old-fashioned and common in order to emphasize the backwardness of the population on all levels. Furthermore, the Christian idea of simplicity as a virtue is mentioned several times. It deconstructs the Russian spirit of patriotism exceptionalism and the infallibility of the state. Books and foreign passports were burned in a great pyre in order to remove Kromoa or the subversive elements. They hate Europe and the US, having fantasies about punishing them. Gas shipments keep being blocked and the walls prevent any cultural mingling to occur, prevent the decadent non-Orthodox West from poisoning the minds of Russians. All this while the non-Orthodox, or even Christian China is their great ally. Interestingly enough, the Russian opposition in exile tends to be likewise shown in a less than positive light, with their aesthetics being grotesque and themselves being petty. Probably a nod to the real-life opposition not being effective and lacking a clear vision. In some ways, the protagonist is actually more cultured and educated, but this is made void by his limited manner of thinking. Final Thoughts It is a short work, but it has a great deal of bite to it. To one who is somewhat familiar with the Russian mentality and customs, it heads close to home and causes a certain degree of frustration at the many, albeit exaggerated, examples of everyday life. Overall, I think that it more than fulfills its purpose. 